The universe is filled with a lot of intriguing galaxies, and some of these galaxies are very difficult to explain even using modern physics. But a lot of these mysterious galaxies are not even that far away from the Milky Way. Many of them you can actually even see using commercial telescopes. And as far as I know, this one right here is probably one of the strangest and one of the most well known. The so-called Evil Eye Galaxy, or sometimes referred to as a Black Eye Galaxy, or the more officially known as NGC 4826. And it looks like based on recent observations and recent analysis, the scientists might have actually figured out why it looks so unusual and I guess somewhat scary. And there's actually even a chance that one day, a few billion years from now, the Milky Way might even look the same. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and so today we're going to discuss this relatively recent study that as always you can find in the description, that essentially discusses the potential origins of the Evil Eye Galaxy, why it looks so strange, what the scientists believed happened to it a few billion years ago, and most importantly, provide really intriguing evidence for the potential future of the Milky Way as well. But I guess here, let's start with what we know about this galaxy already. So because of its unusual shape, it's always fascinated scientists because they couldn't really understand why it seems to contain these unusual dark patches and these unusual dark areas, and why it seems to also contain a lot of other disks and a lot of other fields that not a lot of other galaxies seem to contain. But because this galaxy is somewhat close to us, it's approximately 17 million light years away, it's always been a prime target for astronomical investigations and for various studies trying to figure out how galaxies evolve. And it was pretty quickly established that a lot of these dark patches are basically absorbing dust, or in essence, cosmic dust that has a tendency to absorb a lot of light. But in this case, this galaxy contained a lot of it, and huge amounts of it was also covering much brighter nucleus in the middle. And so because of this contrast between very bright center and relatively dark outskirts, it created this unusual eye shape. But if the actual nucleus was not as bright, it's unlikely that this galaxy would look as impressive. And the reason the nucleus or the center is so bright is of course because of the central black hole. This is a type of galaxies we refer to as Seifer galaxies. Here's another one known as NGC 5793. And in pretty much all cases, it's a result of a very large central black hole absorbing a lot of mass and releasing a lot of light. And actually so much light that these galaxies are usually visible from really far away, with many of them forming these unusual eye-like structures. And so basically this galaxy contains what's known as an active galactic nucleus, massive powerful black hole with a very large accretion disk able to emit a lot of energy and also producing a lot of galactic winds. And actually if you look at these galaxies from really far away and if they contain an even larger black hole, they can become so bright that the rest of the galaxy becomes invisible, which is when we call these objects quasars. In other words, the actual mechanism behind these galaxies is relatively similar. But just like with quasars and a lot of other active galaxies, the reason why they're active and why they're so bright can usually be explained by some kind of a galactic interaction. For example, in some cases, it's because of the interaction with another galaxy that either passes nearby or produces some kind of a tidal disruption, which usually does two things. It creates a huge amount of star formation in a galaxy, usually visible as these very bright starburst regions, and it also usually results in a bright center as seen in various Seifer galaxies. I think one of the more famous examples nearby must be Centaurus A. This galaxy is actually visible even if you have a relatively cheap telescope. This is the closest such galaxy to us. And so something very similar happened to the Black Eye Galaxy as well. As you can see from this image, it clearly contains a lot of star formation, it also has a very bright center, there is also a lot of evidence for a recent large inflow of mass and very prominent dust lanes that were most likely created through some kind of a gravitational interaction. But that's where the similarities kind of end, because turns out that this galaxy has a lot of strange features that were not really explained until relatively recently. And one such feature is in regards to the unusual disks that you can kind of see right here. It contains two separate disks, and they both seem to be spinning in opposite directions from one another. We have the inner disk that contains a lot of these dust lanes, that spins clockwise, as seen in this image, and then we have a much larger, hydrogen-rich disk on the outskirts that spins in the opposite direction from everything. And that's extremely unusual for any type of a galaxy. Two disks spinning in two separate directions. And so naturally the scientists wanted to find a way to explain this. Now there were obviously a lot of explanations including galactic collisions and interactions with nearby galaxies, but just not enough evidence to suggest one or the other. 
But the study that you can find in the description that was released just a few days ago potentially provides a definitive answer to what actually happened here. And it's nothing really unusual. It's a galactic collision with an ancient dwarf galaxy. Something that we know happens all the time. But what is unusual is the type of the galaxy they think must have been responsible for all of this. And so for this study, the scientists were able to differentially determine the type of gas contained inside various disks, discovering that even though the inner disk seems to contain certain types of hydrogen with a very specific natalicity, the outer disk was very different. The overall contents of the gas in the outer disk did suggest that it came from somewhere entirely different. And it probably came from some kind of a much smaller but gas-rich satellite dwarf galaxy that most likely got absorbed by the larger black eye. And so the scientists in the study wanted to actually calculate what sort of a galaxy it must have been in the past, how massive it was, and what other features it might have contained. And based on the observations from metallicity studies and from the overall mass of stars inside the outer disk, they determined that the progenitor galaxy was probably around 500 million solar masses, with metallicity overall extremely similar to some of the older dwarf galaxies that are normally very ancient. But even more surprisingly, both of these features are very similar to the galaxy we have in the night skies, Small Magellanic Cloud. The prominent dwarf galaxy orbiting the Milky Way that seems to have very similar mass and extremely similar metallicity, as well as the overall orbital parameters where we know for a fact that it's going to collide with the Milky Way and get absorbed in a very similar fashion. In other words, the implication from the study is that the ancient black eye galaxy very likely had a very similar dwarf galaxy orbiting around it in a very similar way that eventually became absorbed, initiated all of the star formation and created an active nucleus in the middle, while also forming these other very unusual features that are easily visible in this galaxy today. And because in this case the scientists were able to discover the galactic halo that showed signs of recent disturbance, as well as the presence of an unusual high-density cluster of stars that's often produced during galactic mergers, all of these signs almost definitely point at the galactic collision as a likely source for all of these unusual properties. But the dusty center and a lot of these dark patches and dark dust is really the result of material colliding as it moves in opposite directions, with the outer disk and inner disk interacting in very unusual ways. And so for all we know, maybe this is actually what the future of the Milky Way is going to be as well, as it first collides with the small Magellanic Cloud, and then eventually collides with the large Magellanic Cloud as well. Although unlike the Black Eye Galaxy, it's unlikely to stay this way for a very long time, and is more likely to evolve into something that might resemble this. And that's because we also have the Andromeda Galaxy, that's eventually going to collide with the Milky Way as well, producing a much larger, more unusual in shape galaxy that's even today kind of difficult to predict. But as you can see from all of these images, the scientists have discovered a lot of similar pairs in a lot of different parts of the universe. And so there are definitely quite a lot of possibilities for what the Milky Way might look like in the future. But when it comes to the Black Eye Galaxy, I guess it's fun to know that these unusual properties, including the disks that are spinning in opposite directions, is all just a result of a very specific collision with a very specific type of a galaxy that we also seem to have. With other properties, including the dusty areas that seem to be blocking light from the inside the galaxy, being the result of this interaction between two separate disks. In essence, solving yet another mystery of astronomy without breaking any major rules. But there are obviously a lot of other unusual galaxies, even relatively close to us, that we discussed in some of the videos you can find in the description, and mysteries that still need to be solved as well. And we'll talk more about these once new studies come out or once the scientists learn something else. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.